gents, uh, I'd just like to thank you very much uh, all for attending the event today. Sorry, thank you. Um, I'm Laurie Urban, I'm the, the chair here of Nathenshaw Rescue, uh, a title which I very proudly hold here. Um, today's a, a really major step forward today for the charity. Um, it uh, has a bit of an evolution from its 42 years of history. Some of it here, you can see here the Land Rover, which is now 19 years old, to the ground of the year, which you can see in front of us. Um, the service was created for the community, uh, ultimately, uh, back then by the community, uh, which is something that we very much hold at its core value. We very much say that this station, which you're all standing in today, is for the community, and the doors are always open for every single one of you. Um, many of you will know the reason this got started was due to fatalities here, literally in the river outside. Um, and it led to the community uh, raising money for what well, was a very basic boat, but it was a boat and it's worked. Over the last 42 years, we've developed quite significantly, and that's generally down to the passion uh, of the crew and the great leadership in the past. Um, which allowed us to be, uh, develop into the respected frontline independent lifeboat and water rescue search and rescue team. Naturally, it wouldn't exist without the boats or vehicles to convey them to this. Uh, St John, so our lifeboat here that you see is, just, um, is now at the age of a teenager, it's now 13 years old, um, and it's been due a refit, so it's literally just back two nights ago, three nights ago, from refit, so it's just made it in the nick of time, thankfully. Um, we'll give you a demonstration later of the boat, but it's not just had a, a full refit internally, um, it's had a lot of new systems on board um, to help with communications, things that will keep our crew safe and allow us to be as effective as we need to be in the environment in which we operate in. St John, the boat here um, is a fifth lifeboat, um, and with the refit it's version 5 Mark II, uh, which will hopefully be future proof for at least another 10 years for us. The D-Max, which you see here, um, would also like to give thanks for our D-Max, which we received uh, about two years ago. This was a, a project that, uh, again, Peter, I think, was working on with uh, Lloyds and Dumfries, um, where they gave us this vehicle during COVID to help get uh, our crew to call out. And we basically couldn't let it go, I think is the, the crux of that. So we've worked on a, a project to purchase this after having this vehicle load free for about two years um, and we've then got this uh, kitted out with a range of equipment uh, including uh, warning systems pro uh, provided by Haztec for which the, there are some representatives here from Haztec today. The Grenadier, the vehicle that's behind me here, the, um, this is one of the highlights for today. I suppose uh, this one for myself as well, I do particularly like this vehicle. Um, this is another project that's again it's been at least two years in the making. I think we had an initial chat at the committee meeting and we had a discussion about this vehicle and should or shouldn't we put a, a very small deposit down on this. Um, I'm very glad that we did. We did agree that at the committee meeting. And a significant amount of hard work, I would say particularly between our treasurer Gollum here and our secretary Peter, has put a lot of hard work into getting this vehicle to this stage in which you see behind us. Um, these guys will hopefully demonstrate the, the vehicle's capabilities and stuff that's on it soon. But this vehicle ultimately changes what we've got just uh, beside us, which is the Land Rover. It's now, as you see, a 54 plate. There is only 16,000 miles on this, but we know it's time to change at 19 years old. The vehicle here was third Land Rover we've had, having previously uh, been gifted by the Police and Gallery Police beforehand. The uh, land day, unfortunately, is no longer ideal for pulling the trailer to emergency call outs. Uh, and in terms of crew safety and comfortability, we now move to the Grenadier. That being said, we will actually very much miss this, and I'm actually gutted at the same time that this is going to be pulled off service. And it's going to hopefully go to someone who will care for, for it as much as we have. Someone will certainly get a good deal out of it. The Grenadier behind us is the first of its type um, on the run emergency service vehicle in the UK and certainly the first one in Europe, if not the world. Um, and as such, there's been a massive interest in its capabilities. Peter, assisted by Gollum, will tell you more about this vehicle in a few minutes. I'd like to hand over to the Reverend Douglas Irvin, the Minister for Calabria Parish Club, uh, to say a few words um, of blessing before St John and the Grenadier are formally handed over. Thank you. Thank you. 
it's a, a, a privilege to be here and to be asked to join the, in this day of celebration and uh, commissioning. Uh, it, uh, those who go out on the lifeboat uh, do so uh, exposing themselves to risk. Uh, the psalmist wrote this, some went out on the sea in ships, they were merchants on the mighty waters. They saw the works of the Lord, his wonderful deeds in the deep. For he spoke and stirred up a tempest that lifted high the waves. They mounted up to the heavens and went down to the depths. In their peril their courage melted away. They reeled and staggered like drunkards. They were at their wits end. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. Thanks for rescue. Uh, we're now going to move to the formal handover uh, of the vehicles uh, to our Chair Laurie Irvin and our Vice Chair Lonnie, Ronnie Clark, if you'd like to come across. Uh, we'd like to invite two very special people forward, Chris Jackson and John Burton, to take part in this ceremony, please. Chris has served with Nithin Shore Rescue for 30 years and today marks his retirement from the service. Chris served in the crew uh, as most recently as a station officer uh, for a lengthy period uh, and he was charged with the upkeep and daily business of the station and all within it. Uh, this is a really busy and often underestimated role uh, which Chris has delivered really well and helped keep us in line within his station. Uh, Chris will formally hand over the keys for the Grenadier to Laurie. Uh, in a wee minute, in a wee minute. In a wee, when, when I see you then, uh, and uh, John, uh, John Burton, uh, John uh, came to Lifeboat in 2018, bringing a wealth of experience to the Merchant Navy. Uh, John has served in the crew and latterly has faithfully carried out maintenance checks on the equipment and vehicles in the station uh, at least once a week, if not twice. Uh, we have been assured that at any time the vehicles anything with a battery or fuel or a PPE and all that we need for training has uh, been in a good condition and ready to go for any call outs. So guys if you like to step forward uh, please and uh, Laurie will accept the keys for the, from Chris for the, uh, uh, the Grenadier and Ronnie will accept a And Ronnie will accept a kill cord, which is the safety device in the boat, uh, from John. <laughs> okay, uh, we're just going to do the, the normal thing you'd expect with a bottle of champagne, so I'm just going to step out of the way for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, I'm going to hand over Chris's, um, he's a bit heavier, but 
Super years on this one. Uh, super years of service that have completed this month, so October 1993 um, to this month. Uh, so 30 years, absolutely amazing uh, amount of service. So, Chris. Thanks, Laurie. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the the process of raising the funds and uh, thank a number of people who have and organisations that have supported us along the way. Um, the refit of St John um, is actually the what we just completed is this um, the second phase, a two-phase process. We we started off by replacing the engines um, with support of the Department for Transport uh, Lifeboat Fund back in late 2019, early 20. COVID kicked in, there's a bit of a delay, um, uh, and so the, the, the second phase took a little bit of time um, to, to get underway. Um, so what, what we've done is a complete refit of the boat, um, uh, including the replacement of two engines there, we'll serve a spare engine here in the station. Um, so just to give you a little bit, we've, we've touched on it, but just to give you a little bit more information on that, and then um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the, the various uh, funders. The, this second phase of work um, was completed over a period of about four weeks. Um, the boat's been down in Somerset in Yeovil. Um, Dorian Marine in Somerset undertook the work, but Dorian himself, who owns that company, um, used to work for Ribcraft, who built the boat right at the beginning. So he, he, he knows the boat from uh, 13 years ago. Uh, and it's great to have his expertise. The, the key work undertaken has been a complete um, refit of all the electrical systems, so all the cabling has been taken out, all the metal work was taken off, um, stripped and uh, powder coated, new navigation and communications equipment, and in particular um, the installation of our wireless IWCS headsets. Now we're very excited about that, some of you might not be, but it, um, cutting edge uh, communication headsets for us and for the first time the provision of a fixed thermal camera to aid um, search and rescue and so that's the bit that's sticking up at the top there where you can see the camera there and we'll, we'll uh, give a little bit of a demonstration uh, where people can have a look on the boat um, after this um, there's also repairs to the hull uh, and the tubes uh, including the installation of the keel protection that nice little black stripe there at the front for the first time, uh, which will protect the boat as we, as we go forward, and a, a range of additional safety features have also been added to the boat. Um, so, the work on St John would not have been possible without the, the generous support, um, in particular, of the Coastal Communities Benefit Fund, which is uh, funds received from the Scottish Crown Estate, uh, administered by Dumfries and Galloway Council, and it's great to three, see our three local elected members here today. Um, we also received support from Annandale and Nithdale uh, Community Benefit Fund, which is uh, administered by Foundation Scotland. Um, and it's those two funds have been the two significant uh, uh, funds that have supported the, 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 the work here. And, and, and in terms of the Grenadier, um, the Grenadier support is, um, it, it has been um, has come from a quite significant grant from St John Scotland, um, who, um, in, in a way, of, of, of are doubly supporting the, the purchase of the Grenadier because the, the sale of the Land Rover will also help with the funds to, to um, for the purchase of the Grenadier, and St John Scotland helped with the, the provision of the of the Land Rover originally. So they're, they're kind of there's a legacy support there from them. And it's also funds from the Coastal Communities Benefit Fund, which has gone towards the cost of the Grenadier as well. And then finally, um, just to mention the ICC DMAX here, 
Um, special thanks to Lloyd's uh, Limited Dumfries, who gave us an extremely good deal on the purchase of that vehicle and all, already mentioned the loan of the vehicle through the, um, the, the COVID pandemic. Um, uh, and that purchase was also supported by a grant from the National Lottery Community Fund. So there's been a whole range of different funders that have supported the work here that you can see uh, behind us. And then finally, I just wanted to thank and acknowledge all the individual donors and supporters that help us with our day-to-day -day running costs. It's around £40,000 a year to, to run the lifeboat station. And, and it, 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 without those individual small donations, it, we wouldn't be able to provide the service that we do today. And then linked to that, is those key um, business sponsors and supporters and, and given we have St John's, the Strong Life Boat here and the Grenadier behind us and uh, other vehicles, um, I've got special thanks to St Michael's Garage who support the fuel for St John and Premier Taxis who support uh, fuel for our vehicles. And then with that, I'm going to hand over to Peter. Thanks very much. Firstly, I just want to invite Jack Stanley from Enios. Jack is uh, basically the boss for UK for Enios, and I'm um, just going to invite him to say a few words about how the Grenadier came about. It's quite an interesting story, so Jack, I'll hand over to you. Thank you. Uh, I won't boy for too long. Um, but yeah, they've just asked me to say a few words about how this how this vehicle came about, really. Um, first, it's a privilege to be here. Um, to coincide with the relaunch uh, of this place as well. So essentially, like all the best stories, this started in the pub. Uh, so Jim Macliff is uh, our CEO and chairman, and he owns somewhere in the region of 100 original Land, uh, Land Rovers around the world, and Jeep Wranglers and all sorts of things. And essentially, he wanted to build his own. Uh, and Land Rover wouldn't essentially let him build uh, a bespoke version for himself, so he decided, like all fantastic billionaires, to build his own. Uh, and it's fantastic to see what is actually the first blue light running there uh, in the UK uh, behind us here. Uh, but yeah, essentially in 2017 in the Grenadier pub in London, uh, so Jim had the crazy idea after some points to <laughs> create his own vehicle. Uh, for most people that would be the end of the story, but of course uh, these sorts of people when they get an idea and to uh, see it through. Uh, this started in 2017, so we are six years into this, I am about three years into the project. Uh, and yeah, all I want to say is it's, it's fantastic to see the first blue light vehicle it's exactly what this vehicle was built for. Uh, it's, it's the spiritual successor to the classic off-roaders, of which are fantastic to see uh, so many defenders still on the road as well. Uh, and I look forward to seeing many more Grenadiers on the road, uh, especially in this, uh, well, with such an important application. So thank you very much. Thanks, uh, that's appreciated. We had actually invited Sir Jim here today, but uh, we've he's got a small purchase at a football club on going at the moment, so he's tied up with other things. Um, so, just to say a few words about the Grenadier, um, to go through the various bits and pieces, uh, uh, to show you both the Grenadier and the Isuzu, uh, some of the work that's been done. So, the library around both vehicles uh, has been done uh, by uh, our friends at uh, Signcraft, based at Catherine Field Industrial Estate. Uh, Jason and his uh, uh, team have been faithful for supporters to us for a number of years and they always help us out, particularly when I phone them saying I need something for tomorrow. Um, the vehicles both look absolutely fantastic and as you can see the library in all three vehicles actually matches up. It's uh, bespoke, it's something that myself and Jason designed and I think they look absolutely brilliant. Uh, even our friends at Emergency One and other agencies have been really impressed by the work we've done so thanks to Signcraft. Uh, Aztec. There you go. Uh, Aztec, uh, Richard and Craig are here today. Uh, they have uh, been involved with us from the start uh, in relation to both vehicles. Uh, they've supplied the um, warning systems 
uh, initially we heard from Richard, um, he got in touch with us uh, because the, uh, he'd heard about the Grenadier and he's a bit of a fan himself. Uh, I'm sure you'll agree that the systems look absolutely great and they sound excellent as well. That. Uh, so, uh, they that they just, the vehicles were just so pleased with the way they've been done up for us, they're absolutely fantastic. Um, emergency One, uh, Emergency One uh, are based at Cumnock, a uh, massive factory, it's like the best place for a young boy or girl to go because it's just full of fire engines, it's fantastic. As a fireman's boy myself, I just fell in love the minute I walked into this place. Um, they've been really, really good with us, they've fitted out both the vehicles up to the spec and standard that we required. It was quite an unusual job for them. Uh, some of the additional bits of kit that we've got uh, is the mast that you've seen in top there, which will make quite a lot of difference for us at scenes. Uh, the mast in the back of the Land Rover, uh, you need arms like Samson to be able to blow that up. Uh, just the fact that you can press buttons now for that to appear is uh, much better and make a lot of difference for us. Uh, it just make things much more easy. Uh, we've got new radios throughout both vehicles. Uh, the 360 Lightning, as you can see, uh, and although he's not here today, we'd really like to thank Brian Gerwin from Emergency One, uh, who's been very supportive throughout the build. So that now basically concludes the, the ceremony. And, uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the formal ceremony. Uh, we'll now ask you uh, to join us for refreshments. We're also going to close the doors and get the heater on as well, because we badly need to. I'm frozen. Um, so if you want to make your way up to the back, there's... Uh, free alcohol, there's free drink, there's free sandwiches and everything up there at the back, tea, coffee, etc. We'd also like to thank Jamie Milligan uh, from the Swan Dumfries for providing us uh, with our refreshments for this afternoon as well. So again, thanks for coming and enjoy the next hour or so.